this is Cheryl for Sweet Sensations, and I just decided to show um, some soaps that I've been working on. I'm very, 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 very new to soap making, and um, some people that I've subscribed to on YouTube here have been very, very kind to me and asked me to show some of the soaps I've been working on. So what you see here is just some soaps that I've been working on yesterday, and um, I'm actually quite pleased with how they came out. So, this one here, if you can see that, that's my oatmeal and honey soap, which I can't wait till it uh, um, cures in the next uh, four weeks, because it's supposed to be, as far as I understand, oatmeal is very soothing and healing to the skin, and I used um, real honey, I used this one that I just picked up at my local grocery store, and I put like about a tablespoon roughly, teaspoon to a tablespoon of that in the batch. Now I do do small batches just because I'm still very new and I'm learning. But these molds here, I don't know if you can see, my brother made them for me. Um, I just went to Home Depot and got the wood cut. And there is a YouTuber, I think his name is Key Brown. I don't remember the numbers that's after it, but he shows how to make these. And the wood was quite cheap. I think I paid two dollars and some change for I don't even remember how long the piece of wood was, but I was able to get um, these two molds, and then there was a piece left over. Um, but then I also went back and had some more molds made, my brother made for me. So this is my um, oatmeal and honey, as I was saying. It has real honey. It has ground oatmeal. Um, so I took oatmeal flakes here um, that I just got from a bulk barn here in Canada. and ground it up in a coffee grinder and um, put it inside. And then I put oatmeal flakes on top, and it's scented with honey, oatmeal and honey fragrance oil that I got from a supplier here in um, Ontario, Canada. So there's that one. So I'm going to cut that up. And then this one. This one is my um, coconut milk um, soap, and it has strawberry seeds in it. It's a little bit oily on the top. I just made these uh, yesterday evening, so it's not 24 hours yet. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's like whiter spots in it. I don't know why that happened, but if any of you guys know, can you leave me a comment down below? But it's the only one, two, three spots that are a little bit, or well, no, four, that are a little bit more, I don't know if you can see that, whiter than the rest of the soap. So if you guys know why that happens, let me know. And that's scented with coconut, sweet coconut. And it smells awesome. So, lastly, what I did yesterday, which I'm very, 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 very proud of, and I can't wait to cut this one. This is my, well, it's technically my third attempt at swirling, but this one came out the best. And I've put, I don't know if you can see that, glitter on top. Now on top you can only see red and white. The white is actually the natural color of the soap. I didn't use any titanium dioxide because I don't have any yet. But underneath, because I ran out of the colored other colored soaps, underneath there's actually a yellow and a kind of like a orange, like a peachy orangey kind of color. And I'm hoping that those actually stayed during the saponification process. But as you can see, the red is gorgeous. It's the blue-red iron oxide, or the red iron oxide, but it's the blue-red kind that I have a sample from, from Coastal Scents. So, and uh, this is fragrance with mango. And I had some oil here that I probably won't continue using, but seeing how this one came out so great, I might end up getting more. I used canola oil and soya oil, mango seed, mango butter, um, olive oil, and I think palm kernel oil. I think I can't remember everything that I used, but um, yeah, it smells amazing with the mango madness. And um, I can't wait to cut into this. Now all these soaps are under 24 hours, but this one I didn't insulate. Um, I've always insulated the soaps that I started with, and I was watching some YouTubers saying that they don't you, um, insulate their soaps. And I read that um, you don't, you can 
and you can go without insulating it if you're confident with your recipe that it will still saponify. Um, excuse the background noise, my son decided to turn on my laptop, but anyway. Um, I wasn't 100% sure what was the difference. I haven't really done that much research yet into it, but this soap actually hardened quite well. It's nice and hard, and um, it actually hardened better than the other t attempts that I tried to do the swirling. Those ones were quite mushy. Um, I had messaged Kay Shuri soaps, and she told me that um, sometimes the swirled soaps with the colors take a little bit longer to, or the colored soaps take a little bit longer to cure, but I tried un not insulating this one, and so far it seems pretty firm, and it's a different recipe the first time I've ever tried it. As I mentioned, I had some oils that I wanted to kind of use up, um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how it came out, even though there's only red and the natural soap color on the top. But um, I can't wait to cut into that a little bit later. I'll show you pictures once I cut into it. So I'm going to put you guys on pause for a minute while I grab some of the other soaps that I've attempted to do. Okay, YouTube, I'm back. Um, these are just a sample of some of the other soaps that I've tried out um, in the beginning. This soap here is a vanilla, warm vanilla sugar soap. As you can see, I know vanilla turns brown, so I purposely left that one. Um, I didn't color it. But the cream strokes that you've seen there, I attempted to color it a hot pink. And I don't know, it was very weird, but the soap was hot pink when I mixed it. And it was a beautiful hot pink. And I attempted to pour it. As, I'm, I'm not even kidding. As soon as I started pouring it, it all the color just burnt right out of it. So if you guys know as to why that happens, because it was a beautiful hot pink when I mixed it and it was that trace and everything, and all of a sudden as I started pouring it, it just started to turn green. It's still okay, it's still pretty, um, but that cream that's there should have been hot pink. But that's the soap. Now I'm not very good at cutting, guys, so as you can see, it's very uneven. But uh, that's, yep, that's what I made a couple weeks ago. This one here is just a chocolate soap with vanilla specks in it. I don't know if you guys can see them. Maybe not. But uh, vanilla bean specks are in that. And this is when I was trying to cut it with um, like dental floss. Um, but I kept getting these like weird cuts into it. So, Oh, and I got a lot of soap ash. And that was before I knew that um, you should allow the plastic wrap to touch the soap to kind of prevent that but um yeah that's some soap ash there but I like it it's a nice bar I made this um, early December last year and this one I just just started like literally my first week of doing soap <laughs> so there's that this one is um, unscented um, it's made with coconut milk as you can see, there's a little bit of soap ash on the corners because that's where the plastic didn't touch. And I, <laughs> I have a little boy here, so he put his fingers in that. But anyway, that's okay. But this is a really hard soap. Um, this has been curing. It has one more week to cure, but it's already quite hard. So I've adjusted the recipe. It's actually the same recipe as this one here, the one that I showed you with the strawberry seeds. So I just adjusted this one to make a little bit of a less hard soap, but it's still using the coconut milk and the same ingredients. So that is actually that. And it has no scent, it's unscented. This one here, um, I made last week, and I was, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's very grainy. I bought, I got crazy, I, um, went on Coastal Scents and they were having a sale on their fragrance oils 20% off. So I said, let me buy them. Now I know reading and watching YouTube and reading the books that you should always buy one ounce sample of the oils before buying bigger batches just to make sure that the um, scents work. But this was fine until I poured it in the mold and then it started to season rice on me. And I guess it started to do worse again while it was in the mold because that's actually the bottom. And I'm so mad. But it's scented with, um, the green part is scented with Apple Extreme. 
and the top part is um, buttercream from Coastal Scents. The buttercream C, as you can see, is fine, but the Apple Madness, it just... Too bad. It smells so good, guys. Like, you want it... It's like cotton candy. I mean, sorry, candy apples. It smells so good. But, um... We'll see what happens in a couple weeks. Maybe I can... I read... I was reading in the book that said that sometimes if you attempt to soap at a too high of a temperature, it can cause your fragrances to seize as well. So I'm going to try it again and pray that it works at a little bit of a lower temperature. Because I do small batches. I tend to soap at about 100 degrees, 100, 110. But I'm going to try soaping at maybe at like 115. I mean, sorry, soaping at, at this one at maybe 100 and see what happens because I think I did this at 110 or something like that. I'm going to try it at 100 and see what happens. This here was my first attempt at using the piping bag and same thing with this, the fragrances um, started to seize on me again. Funny, the white didn't seize but the blue and the pink did, or the blue did and the pink didn't but it's all the same fragrance, like the whole thing is fragrance, the same thing. Um, this one as you can see I put glitter I put my I had Mac glitters that I got from the Mac sale here in Toronto but um, there's pink and the iridescent glitters on there um, but yeah oh, there's like a little hole there but this was a really nice white when I originally did it I insulated it and I noticed as I was insulating it um, it started to turn, like when it gelled, it started to turn the color, but it never really came back the white. So I'm going to try it without insulating it and see if there's a difference. And once again, my cutting is bad, but this one, the smell is lavender. Um, or sorry, jasmine and I can't remember the other one, but it's the Coastal Scents one. So I'm not going to use those for this. I'm going to try a different something for that. And lastly, I have here um, my lavender. And I actually have lavender, ground lavender in it, and it's scented with lavender essential oil. And I colored it, it was supposed to be purple, but it turned this taupey color. <laughs> and I just chose the violet oxide, I think it was, or violet ultramarine, or I can't remember. But that was my first attempt. And I was also, once again, cutting it with the string there, and as you can see, it, yeah, doesn't cut very, very nice. But yeah, so those are the soaps I've done so far, and I will take pictures of the other ones that I've done and post it on YouTube. Alright, thanks guys, and any suggestions that you guys have for beginners or anything that you want to recommend, just post comments below, it would be great, a great help to me, okay? Thanks.